be with you today. We've got a great show for you, some great guests, and of course, announcements before we get started. So as you guys are tuning in, make sure that I can, you can hear me. Um, just maybe make a little comment, that'd be great. So Home Staging Talk Show Live is brought to you by the International Association of Home Staging Professionals, and I'm the chairwoman of, and I'm very proud to be that. We have members worldwide and um, a lot going on in the world for sure. So Home Staging Talk Show Live is set up to be a conversation within the home staging industry about business, success, challenges, just anything we wanna talk about. And so today we have three guests for you. Um, we have Mary Scally, who is out of Houston and um, has a fabulous business there. Um, June Carter, who's out of Jacksonville, Florida area and a wonderful um, business owner and also our IHOSP coach, business coach. And then Chris Widener, who's one of our keynote speakers for this year's conference in um, Denver. And he is our business keynote. So we get to hear from him, which is great. And um, of course, taking any of your questions or comments you wanna share um, as we get along. So again, as people are tuning in, let me know that you can see me. I have some announcements to make, of course. Um, let's see here first. Our conference in Portugal, which was supposed to be May 23rd and 24th has been postponed. And so it is postponed until May, 2021. Um, Sonia Redabinovich and Verena Mumford worked very hard on uh, all the preparations and things were, you know, obviously humming along. And then all of a sudden uh, the virus has really thrown a lot of events off. So it's not just ours. Um, they originally were thinking of maybe doing it in the fall and then have opted instead with a vote with the members and getting feedback to do it next May, and I think that's wise. Um, we don't want it to be too close to our international conference in Denver, and um, also it will give people time there to hopefully get back on their feet and recover a little bit financially because this has really uh, been terrible for everybody where countries are literally shut down. So um, May 2021, and so if you already have a ticket, your ticket is still good. Um, the hotel is going to transfer all of our reservations over so we don't lose any of our money there but um, they will transfer. And if flights, I know that June had already booked her flight. And so the airline is actually making concessions for people who had travel booked. And I think she actually has until the end of May or something to use her ticket. So they're being really um, great about extensions of uh, trip deadlines and so forth. So hopefully that works for all of you as well who may have made travel plans. Um, and, and, you know, we wouldn't have postponed this if it wasn't obviously super important based on what's going on in the world. And um, it really, we really didn't have a choice. So again, May, 2021, you'll hear more about that coming up. And that brings me to our conference in Denver, of course, right now we're still full steam ahead, making, you know, plans to hold our event <coughs> in Denver, September 25th, 26th and 27th will be the IHOS conference and expo. It'll be fabulous. It really is a true celebration of our industry where we bring together um, colleagues from all over the world, fabulous speakers that are going to educate you, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced level, and um, also the largest vendor expo for the home staging industry with companies who are excited to come and meet you and um, be able to share their products and services that they offer to help us with our businesses to be more successful and to be a great resource for us. So that again is um, September 25th, 26th, and 27th right here in Denver. And uh, um, the advanced stager training will follow. That's two days of advanced stager training. That will be the 28th and 29th. And I'm excited because this year we actually have two of our keynote speakers will be sharing at the advanced stager training. So um, we have not done this before. So you're going to get some added one on one time with these excellent business owners, speakers, super knowledgeable. So one of them is Johnny Fowler. He'll be um, talking on social media. He's our marketing business keynote. And then Chris Widener will be um, coming to the advanced stager training as well. And he's our business keynote. So I'm excited for that. Uh, you can register for these. Uh, tickets are on sale at ihospconexpo.com. Hey, Lynn. Looks like I only got one bar of service. So hopefully that improves. <laughs> hope, I hope I'm coming through okay, because all of a sudden my my Wi-Fi signal does not look that great. Um, okay, next, let's see here. So those of you that are, you know, we're all um, scaled back hopefully in our time being out and about. Uh, schools are closed as we know, businesses have had to shut down. 
Um, and so people are kind of wondering, like, what do I do during this time? And so make your time productive. I mean, I know for a lot of people, it's scary thinking about what we're dealing with, which is um, unprecedented in most of our lifetimes as far as a pandemic. And so, you know, stay safe, wash your hands, all the tips you've been hearing. But how can you stay viable as a um, industry professional in the home staging industry? So, um, hey, good morning, everybody. So we do have, you know, education. So this is a great time since you're sort of stuck at home anyway, you may as well learn, make your time productive. So I'm going to throw up the um, designations you can learn. Here's the buyer trends specialist, which is currently being updated. Anybody who does register for that, we will um, obviously send you the new uh, information once it's ready. But the buyer trend specialist is all about thinking about um, selling a house from the perspective of a buyer. What do they want to see in the property? Who's buying what and why? So studies the different demographic. Uh, groups. There's actually six demographic groups. And why are they purchasing? <clears throat> what are they looking for? Um, talks about property styles as far as elevations, the exterior. How can you tell what kind of property is when you drive up? And um, and then also terminology, when people say modern versus contemporary, transitional, traditional. And then obviously the trends, the material trends, flooring fixtures, paint colors, all those different things are in this designation. So it's um packed full of information and it's super helpful. So that would be one that you might want to consider taking because it's great education. Um, the next one we have is the luxury home staging specialist. This was a designation obviously that we gave out at our conference, I believe two years ago. And so um, you will watch the webinar, you'll attend it. There's a test you take at the end and it's not hard. It's mostly to make sure that you are actually, hey Terry, actually paying attention and um, absorbing the information. So uh, you receive your designation for the time, and then you need to send in three luxury projects based on the criteria you learn in the webinar. And once we receive those, you'll get your certified LHS logo, which you see pictured here. And so that's a great um, you know, designation to earn should you want to crack into the luxury market or you're working in that already and you want to show that you're more qualified. So it's, um, it's a great session taught by experts in the industry. And then the last one we have that we just released here is the Investor Staging Consultant designation. So this is from uh, Nashville and last year we issued this at our conference. And so again, learning how to get into the mindset of the investor, how to market to them, how to price your projects, what kind of projects can you do, um, materials and so forth, material trends that are you know on point for different types of properties. And of course with investors often, you know, they're not going to pour a ton of money into a house. You have to know which ones are more budget friendly versus if you are working with a spec builder or a higher end investment property, it would be different um, materials used. And um, again, this is in um, self-paced online webinars. So you're watching the speakers and then there is a test again to make sure that you're paying attention. And so it's really wonderful. And at the end, uh, there's even the short term rental market. We address that as well. And then there's some additional opportunities for education that we're working on related to that uh, session or segment, the short-term rental, vacation rental properties and so forth. So we'll get some added education for you. So all of these are, I believe are 175 normal. We do have specials that run periodically. So for less than $200, you can earn some credentials that then you can use, work on your marketing and so forth in order to be ready to hit the ground running when we're all out of this crisis. And so, um, I'm just like you guys, I'm sure you've watched your share of Netflix movies and, um, you know, Netflix has some special movies that are just on Netflix that we've caught a couple of those, but I'm not going to sit around all day watching TV. You know, I'm still working. Our classes are still happening. Uh, we still have things we got to do. And um, uh, a lot of people who have moved to online education, virtual classrooms and so forth, which is great. And so as a stager, how can we remain viable? So one of the things we will talk about today with both Mary and June is what they're doing for their businesses to stay viable right now. And a lot of that has to do, we've heard the terminology e-consultations, e-previews, or the word virtual. I'm not a big fan of that word. I, I was linking virtual staging consultations, but realized those first two words together, virtual staging, we don't condone. And that's when they put, you know, fake, fake um, images of furniture. They're not fake, but there's images of furniture in photographs, but the house itself is not staged. So, um, if you're using that word, just make sure you're uh, delineating that you're not actually doing virtual staging. It's a consultation. It's a service you're doing that you're doing it virtually from your home versus going in person. And um, that makes a difference. These are our keynote speakers, by the way, for our conference. So Chris is going to be joining us today. So we're excited for that. 
Johnny Fowler, he did a little segment for us, um, uh, posted a short video, and then we also had him on as a guest speaker for our last months, or was it two months ago? Kind of losing track of time. Um, all membership call for our association. We'll get him on to the show as well because he's a wealth of knowledge. And of course, I had Robbie on a couple of weeks ago, and um, he is what he calls a cultural catalyst, which I love that term. He um, will be part of our designation we are issuing in September, which is the IHOSP CDE, Cultural Diversity Expert. And uh, because it's important, we understand how to work with different people from different parts of the world, and they might have just different customs and so forth and be from here. So we just have to understand how to work with people in a world that is um, becoming more diverse and inclusive. So excited for that. Again, you can go to ihospconexpo.com to get that. Hey, Brita from Ireland. Wow. So one of the kind of the fun things about um, everybody being stuck at home is... <laughs> We're all on social media a lot more. So we're hopefully we'll be getting guests that we don't normally get to see. So that's exciting. So how is Ireland? I know I I am Irish. Would love to go there someday. And I've heard it's beautiful. So thank you for joining us. Um, I do want to put this up right after this show. Get a cup of coffee or go refresh yourself, go to the restroom and so forth, go stretch. We're going to do a second session with um, our, our insurance provider talking about business disruption and your policy coverage and because again, as a stager, small business owner, sometimes some terminology they call us micro business. There's 57 million micro business owners. And so we don't even qualify as a small business because we're just individuals. You could be a consultant, professional speaker, um, somebody who, you know, you used to work in an, in an industry. Now you've kind of um, branched off on your own and you've had this business and then the virus hits. So now what? And what are your... Um, you know, what can you expect as far as any kind of a bailout package or what kind of help can you get for your business so that when this is all over, you're still in business. Um, so we're going to talk about insurance and because I asked um, KMRD, who we have our insurance through, to um, put together a presentation. And so we're going to be doing that at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So this this session will end at 1030, have about a half an hour break, and then we'll um, bring them on in a separate segment and um, business disruption in your policy coverage, and we'll talk about other things as well. So I know for a lot of people, maybe you feel helpless um, facing all of this. Um, first, I want to put the stager Wednesday, raise the standard, so make sure to hashtag that today. If you're feeling sort of like this is all being happening around you, you feel powerless, there are some things you can do to hopefully make an impact. Legislation is being um, tossed around, as hopefully you know, and it's supposed to be helping the American people. And then, you know, I'm not going to get partisan here, but both sides are trying to sneak in stuff that really have nothing to do with, with helping the economy and helping the American people. So they got to get their act together. And so I can't fly to Washington and go yell at somebody and say, get your act together. What I can do is write to my senators, which I've done twice. Um, I've written to them and I've also in the bill, um, I have petitioned for small business because the, um, the bill as the last iteration of it that I reviewed didn't really have a lot of protection for small business. And so even though it gave tax credits and certain things like that, it still required a cash outlay for employers with 50 to 500 employees. And so if you're in that boat, uh, 50 to 500 employees, you would be required to pay for sick pay. And um, if somebody has to care for a family member or a child who's out of school, they are eligible for the full family leave act on the dime of the employer for the most part. And there are some caps and so forth on it. But the bottom line is if small businesses are already shuttered, and can't bring revenue in, and then they're being required to pay employees for um, sick pay and so forth, they're not gonna be around. So there needs to be provisions for the small business owners and also the micro business owners beyond just a tax credit, um, You know, whether it's a um, financial help or um, re-examining why they're mandating that for the 50 to 500, but letting the 501 employees and above off the hook, they're exempt. I don't think that's right, so I've written that. Um, if you have fewer than 50 employees, you might fall into the labor department's exemption that you wouldn't have to meet that criteria if you have that many employees. And so for, as a staging business, I don't have, you know, 50 employees. Most most staging companies wouldn't have that many. You fall under that exemption. Um, <clears throat> however, if you have a different type of company or your spouse does or someone on, in your life does, they need to be aware of what the legislation is and then write to your senators. So that's what I've done. And you know, um, even though I got a canned, a canned letter back from one of them, which tells me I don't think he actually read my letter. At least, you know, I feel like I'm 
hopefully reaching somebody. And I will tell you, um, the disaster relief, the Small Business Administration has loans for small businesses under the disaster relief. You need to go into their site and it's under economic hardship, the economic hardship. It's a complicated thing to fill out, but it's worth it. And I'm, I'm in process and I'm doing that just as a precaution for um, our company. And um, one of the things you have to make sure is that your state, all the counties in your state and so forth are on the list of the disaster things. So when I went in a week ago, Monday, so nine or 10 days ago, our state did not have all the counties. Only four counties in Colorado were listed and they were all in the South. And so I couldn't, I couldn't do anything to get any kind of disaster loan assistance application, nothing. So what I did is I called the governor's office and I called the lieutenant governor and I emailed both of them and I called the news station and I emailed the news station. So um, it's not because I have all this time in my hands. It's just like I'm advocating for myself and I know that you know things have to be done. And the only person that can petition to add the counties is the governor. So um, I don't know why it hadn't been done. So that was my message. Like, why hasn't this been done? You need to get on this because we can't do one thing. And there's a limited amount of money from what I understand. So people want to be able to apply. The next day I got a, an email back from the reporter who said this just hit and our governor had actually petitioned um, the federal government to put us on the disaster list. So all of our counties by Thursday of last week were listed. So was that because I emailed and called? I don't know. Um, maybe that made a little bit of a like, hey, you guys get on the stick and make it happen. So, um, you know, we can make a difference. It was. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> That's my husband, John. Um, so, you know, you never know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it did make the difference. And so I feel good about that. And, um, you know, these are uncertain times. I also want to just remind everybody to be kind online. You know, people really are they're on Facebook a lot. I did post something. We had, um, thank you to all of you who have been commenting and, and reaching out this regarding my son and mother-in-law who were in a bad car accident, uh, I guess it was two days ago, two evenings ago. And um, they, were, they were hit by a man who was going probably 50, 60 miles an hour, never even, never even hit his brakes. He just blasted through a red light. And my son was turning left on a green arrow and he had the right of way. It wasn't like their arrow just turned green. It had already been green for like 10 seconds or so. And then it was his turn and he got, they got um, T-boned and um, our son hit his jaw and shoulder on the steering wheel pretty hard. He thought he dislocated his jaw and um, he's out of the hospital. He was in the ER. And so he was dis uh, discharged, but my mother-in-law remains in, um, the hospital, they took her to the trauma ward and she's got a lot of broken bones. Um, her shins are broken, her, one of her kneecaps, six ribs, collarbone, clavicle, left arm. Um, so it's pretty bad. They were wearing seatbelts, of course, but um, to get hit that hard. So she will have to have surgery. And, um, oh, you can only see a yellow screen. Can anyone see a yellow screen? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm on, you can, everybody see me? How interesting. People say there's only a yellow screen. I don't know why, because other people, if you saw John, then you saw me, right? So I don't want to be talking and doing this. This is where when pe first people come on, if you can't see me, <laughs> tell me. <laughs> um, I'm in. Hmm. Strange. Anyone else see? Just yellow. Interesting. Oh. All right. That's that's annoying. Okay. You know what? Hang on a second. Let me check this default settings here. Red grip cam. Um, play test sound. Okay. I might have to start over. This is not good. In stream. Jenny Norris. Let's see. Um, let's see. All right, guys, sorry. It's working, webcam. Oh, you didn't even see John. Oh, all right, you guys. Okay, so next time, see, I've been talking, blabbing along now for 20 minutes. I'm sorry, you guys, this is so stupid. Um, hang on, June. Stream, stream. Do you see me now? Yeah. 
Can you see me, Kevin? Anyone? I know, but I don't want to be like a yellow screen. People are going to watch the thing and be like, who's on? Let's see here. There's some sort of stupid setting. I hate I hate not knowing what I'm doing here. This I didn't change anything, I swear. Speakers are fine. Integrated webcam. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate that. She's my voice is lovely. Um, I don't know what's going on. Solo off. Solo off. All right. Well, I could throw my own picture up there so you guys know who's talking. <laughs> I'm going to test something out here. Okay, so let's see here. Um, June, I'm going to throw you into the stream and see if they see you. So here comes June. Can you guys see June? I can't hear you, June. So let me, for you guys, let me know if you can see June. No. Rats. And we can't hear you. If this were, what color would it be? <laughs> okay, now you can see June. So June, say something. So we can't hear you. All right, so I can't hear you. Isn't that weird? Can you guys hear me? Okay, now we can hear you. You can hear me. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. okay good. Now, how about me? Anybody see me? <laughs> no. Ah, so, so annoying. All right. Actually, mine here twice. Okay. Well, good morning, June. Good morning. Good morning. For people who don't know who you are, let them share who you are. Okay. I am June Carter. My business is Just Solutions, that is, get your stuff together. And I am an ASPM and a certified professional organizer and a um, certified life coach and the IAHSP home stager coach. I'm in Fernandina Beach, Florida, and that's important because of some of the other things we're going to be talking about. And we were originally going to be talking about our lead program, but now I said, Jenny, let's talk about virtual home staging and virtual services. Yes. So. Oh, hang on a second. Let's see. Can you guys see me? Nope. Well, I just, <clears throat> I just put myself in again. So show and stream. So tell me if you guys can see me anyway. Um, Cause I'm in here twice. So I got to get rid of one of me. <laughs> so we'd like you twice as much. Exactly. Um, and I would put me a picture, but I can't find it on the thing here. So whatever. So you guys know it's me. Um, you should hold a picture of me. This is Jenny. I even got like my, my hair and makeup. Look really pretty. I'm <laughs> um, anyway, so June has already been doing a lot of the virtual consultations and so forth. So talk about as a stager, um, you know, how you started doing that service and how, because you said you're, you're more productive than ever, which I know a lot of stagers are kind of sitting at home sort of afraid so how um how have you been able to do that well the reason i live in this it's an island called amelia island it's the northeast corner of florida and it's tiny and the county is actually a rural county so when i moved here there you are there you're gone there you oh, are. I was here? am i here <laughs> you're gone but you were there yeah there you are back okay Yay. good okay okay so, Oh, yeah, your hair does look great. It's a little busy, but anyway. So, Fernandine, okay, hello, everybody. I'm here. When I moved here five years ago, I knew before I moved that I needed a diverse streams of income because of my community. So, unfortunately, part of the message is get ahead of it, but we'll talk about how to do that. Um, I just knew I'd be limited if I just stuck to one thing. So, I have five streams of income, and it was either last week or the week before that your guest speaker said had at least three um, streams of income, right? Yep. We just got that on a call. Okay. So my five streams are um, home staging, professional organizing, interior design, teaching home staging, and being the home stager coach. 
Um, so part of what happened is because we're in North Florida, we have a very elderly community and a lot of vacation rentals. So those people have been contacting me now for years from all over the country. I have dozens of clients I've never met. Now this is valid both for vacant and occupied. Now, whether or not I go into a vacant house right now, I, I don't have to make the decision so I don't have an answer. But um, some of these vacant houses, nobody's been in for weeks or months, and I would say they may be safe. I don't know. But I just happen to have a client base around the country for staging because of my location. But that caused me to set this up. I also have a client base around the world for home stager coaching. I've worked with people in Egypt and France, all over the United States, Hawaii and Oregon. And so it's very typical. I get a call from a 50 something son of people in their late eighties who's Indiana. Can I go in and um, stage the house, send them the valuables, sell what I can, donate what I can, leave the house ready for selling. And I've never met the guy, but then in this particular case that he said to me, throw everything out. And I said, you can't throw everything out. And I said, I need an hour and a half FaceTime. And we're going to go through this whole house together on FaceTime. And we're going to determine what you need me to send you, what I'm going to throw out. They left without their father's sweaters. I had to send overnight sweaters. So it's a very valid way for us to work. Now, some of the advantages of virtual home staging. I like Zoom best because I can send the recording to people afterwards. So either I can do a written report, I can send a virtual report through a recording, or I can do both. For each one of those, I charge a little more. I've increased my, my stream of income. Um, now, don't forget, home sellers are stuck in their houses, too, right now. So I had a virtual staging last week where she said to me, my husband's 88. We want to sell. We know we can't list it probably till May or June. I want to do the work now. So in our marketing, let's remind them that there is life after this. And for an occupied staging, let's do it now. Let them do the work, and then they're ready to list. And I, I've been, so you said, you know, so Zoom is a great platform. And by the way, Zoom normally up to, what is it? Um, is it 100 people? It's free or whatever the number is. It's free for 40 minutes. But, but they just, oh, 40 minutes, I see. But they lifted the ban. They lit, Zoom just adjusted that because all the kids and they want to be able to have it be used as a tool. So they're not making you pay after 40 minutes. I think they've extended that. Um, okay. Go to meeting is another one. So go to webinar, go to meeting has the same platform. You can see people and you can record stuff, um, you know, is the worst case Skype, WhatsApp, FaceTime, you know, any of those applications you can actually get face to face with people for to be able to read the reaction and so forth. So it doesn't have to be this um, impersonal method. So I think that's genius that what you've been doing. Before this even happened, you were doing this. So you're sort of like the you're the pro prophetic stager. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you that. <laughs> I'm just, I was just isolated here and I turned out that I, um, I love coaching and I love uh, coaching home stagers. It's just been wonderful. And I'll put in a little plug. We still have a spot left for Friday's virtual coaching at 12 noon Eastern to develop your unique marketing message. And then monthly starting April 6th, that's the first Monday and monthly, monthly, the first Monday of every month. Uh, group coaching on a variety of topics. So we've been posting about that. I mean, but I feel I like make, make your time productive because I think I was starting to say um, a lot of us are on social media and um, with the whole political thing that's going on, you know, it's remember to be kind to each other. I mean, I, I, I feel like I know there's a lot more people on Facebook because of all the comments I got on the car accident and I, I can appreciate everybody sharing, but to have that many comment and then also see it, it just tells me that we're all on our phones or laptops, we're all on social media. So, um, you know, no matter how this plays out, remember to be kind to each other. You know, we all want the best for our businesses, for each other, for the country, uh, for the world. And so um, just kind of keep that in mind as you're posting, because I, I feel like somebody's behind the screen, people not, you know, 
not necessarily people that I know necessarily, but get kind of um, either sarcastic or a little bit aggressive or nasty behind the screen. And there's no there's no re reason to be doing that. So it's the old golden rule. If you can't say something nice, then just scroll on. <laughs> right? Um, can I spend a minute and talk about some of the etiquette for this? Yes. Okay. I'm, we talked about Zoom. That happens to be the platform I use most often. If somebody has another um, Apple product, FaceTime is easy, but you don't record it. Um, so test it. Get yourself a Zoom account now and test it. Send your spouse or your kid or your best friend a meeting and test it. Don't be staggering through it your first time. Um, when you send out the invitation, put the title, the date, the time, all the details in the title block. It'll help you remember what you're doing because now they're going to be all over your calendar and it'll help your person identify what it is that they're accepting. And I send it out as a calendar invite on my Google Calendar. Get on the call early before your client. Don't make them wait. Now, don't do this. Watch. Don't eat and drink on your call with your client. <laughs> I need my morning coffee, June. Right, right, right. But don't do that when you're with your client. Um, close the other programs that may make your computer run slow. Um, so that's um, check your lighting. Make sure you're well lit. I've done. I'm here. Don't be lit from underneath. Check your lighting. Um, if you call them out, a lot of us are like, oh, I can sit in my garden. You have airplanes, children, and traffic that you don't even realize is background noise. So be careful. Look at, don't do what I'm doing. Look at the camera, not the lens, so that they feel like you're talking to them. That's one of my challenges. Get your full face. Um, practice so that you've got, just like Jenny has, your full face. Um, be aware of your background. No messes, no personal items. I always love Jenny's screen. That really works. Um, make sure your audio... <laughs> Make sure your um, audio is audible. Um, learn to mute and unmute as necessary. Dress professionally. Earrings, makeup, hair. You don't know. I could be in my pajama bottoms and my bunny slippers. You don't know that. But from, from here up, I'm presentable. Um, and stay on the call a minute or two after the client. Because you never know when they will. Wait, wait, wait. Just and when they hang up after them. So it's just some of the etiquette that I, then if you like, we can talk about how to do an actual, I'm not sure who else you have scheduled, but I have an outline uh -oh. for doing the through whatever direction you want to take. Yeah, so I don't see, I know Chris is here. I see him in his office and then I don't see Mary. So we, yeah, why don't you quickly do the, the, um, the scrub that, tips or the what you're going to share and then we can bring Chris on. It's just like a regular walkthrough, but now you're going to be educating your client because they're holding the phone or the iPad or the computer. And you tell them, stand outside, walk through the front door, do the over, just like you do as an, do the overall first, then go back and do the details. And you want to see each room from all four corners. And this is also where your recording is critical because if you're going to do a written report or if you eventually do the hands-on, you need to be able to remember yourself because you can't take copious notes while you're doing this. They're so, actually doing this. They're, they're actually walking you around live like you're walking through the house with them for the first time. Yep. And then That's you're it. giving you're giving feedback right then. Yep. Same thing that you do in any occupied walkthrough or even in a, um, uh, in a vacant. Just you could do the vacant consult now and have it all in the queue ready to go so you have a backlog of work. And then when right. this is all over, you know, pull the trigger and let it go. So some other, we're all a little isolated. Contact the other stages in your area, have a little virtual meeting. We're doing that next week with the Jackson. We have such a great Jacksonville chapter and we're only 15 or so months old, but we have a virtual meeting of um, the board and leadership next week. And then on the 16th, we have a virtual meeting on color. Also, if this 
isn't right for you, that's okay. Figure out what else you're good at and go for it. This might be the time, start writing a blog and look for um, sponsors. Add another stream of business. Start getting trained as a professional organizer. Research a new line of business. Um, start looking into how would I run open houses. Use this time. Also, be old fashioned, work the phones, Everybody's isolated. This is the one time your realtors will be really happy to hear from you. Um, yeah, no, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to just kind of circle back really fast. I was going to make a note, but I can't reach a pen without leaving the frame. Um, for the consultation, so you're doing live, and I, I just wanted to just briefly share, but what I have been doing is actually having clients send me photos of their house room by room. I'm like, move around the corner so I can see all the wall space. They email those to me, I analyze them, I type up the summary, I send it to them, and then we go over it live on the phone. So that's another, um, you know, or FaceTime. So that's another way to do it if you don't want to have, you know, the walking through. If you're a person that's like, well, I got I to gotta think about it, I got to see the room and kind of like think about what I want to do. I don't want to be doing it on the spot. Um, that other method would be the one you would use. You'd have them send you the visual images. They could even send you a video of their house walking through. That would work. And then you have time to kind of think and put things together and then get them on the phone and go over the recommendations. So either way works. Okay. So yes. Yes, absolutely. Find one that's right for you. And that takes some practice. So, so call your sister in Oshkosh and ask her to do a practice with you. And, and they're on, you know, if they're on lockdown too, they may enjoy spending some time, but also this is the best time for more training. I love what IAHSP has offered. Our website is phenomenal and stagedhomes.com, it is phenomenal. And when I teach ASP, I go through it and keep there. It's a little overwhelming. Take it one, you know, give yourself a half hour a day, but now is a good time to dive into everything we have to offer. Sign up for coaching. I, my coaching went through the roof because people said, oh, this is a good time to do it. Um, keep your self-care in place, eat well, rest, exercise, stress management, and do the other things. I'm, I installed my new QuickBooks yesterday. Believe me, that's not what I wanted to do, but I had the time. I'll be able to get my inventory up to date. This is a great time to write the presentation for the real estate office that you've been putting off. But overall, I'm welcome anybody who'd like to talk about this, who'd like to contact me, who'd like just some input. It doesn't have to be coaching per se. It could just be a conversation. Um, you can reach me on, um, if you go to IAHSP.com and click on education under coaching, my contact information is there. So we're in this together and I'm happy to talk to anybody about it. I'm hunting and pecking on my, I have my laptop up um, on a little basket because my my desktop, I just don't trust it right now. Um, after the whole fiasco, please don't install Windows 10 because it completely took my system down. I shared that last time. So I still have not restored all my programs, but the last time I tried to get on with microphone, I sounded like Minnie Mouse. So I'm using my laptop. So I just typed that in for everybody. Um, great tips. And of course, you know, June has been doing group coaching, limited space, and also one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, we do have people from um, all over the world here. We have somebody from Ireland who was joining us. So um, that was really exciting. So let's see here. Where where is where is she? Oh, did I lose her? Hopefully not. Um, but I think it's really exciting. So we have all over people in all over the world. Um, Brazil launch, by the way, has been postponed. I had Paloma on a couple of weeks ago, so we are waiting on that official launch. But we will get there. And so um, it make your time productive at home or wherever you are. Hold up. And I was kind of thinking about this, like you know, if I owned a restaurant and a bar or whatever and I, I had to shutter my doors and um for however long i would use this time to like refresh it you know i mean i know that maybe money they're scared about that piece of it but if funding is not an issue and um use this time to kind of do a facelift on it or you know make your time productive versus sitting at home it's sort of funny i don't know if every state is like this but here in colorado alcohol um they just shut down the ability to buy um alcohol in um certain counties, I think Denver County, they just banned it. So, oh my God, people were like, it was like Desert Storm. They were lined out the doors to buy <laughs> to buy alcohol. And our state's a dry state, so you cannot buy alcohol. Like in the grocery stores, you can get some wine in here, uh -huh. a lot of the hard liquor. And so anyway, I just thought it was sort of funny that like, God forbid you go without your 
the, the drinks. So people are kind of panicking. And I hope that people aren't sitting home all day just drinking and watching Netflix. So I hope that if you have, even if, you know, your, your job is to spend a huge time to better yourself, read a book. Um, we're going to talk to Chris coming up here. He's got 20 books you could read between now and the time that it's lifted. And you guys can set a goal for yourself to do something productive. Um, your attitude will remain the same unless you feed it with something positive. And so I have deliberately not been watching the news because it's just, there's, I want to stay informed, but there's a part that you feel sort of helpless. Like, you know, I, I, I can't really do anything except try to protect my health and my family, but you just feel sort of like this thing's coming and there's no way to stop it. So if that's your mindset, don't do things that are going to feed into this fear and negativity, read something positive, do something productive, um, you know, help somebody else, whether it's virtual or physical, do, do something. So, um, you know, just, you know, make your time productive and don't go into the fear box is what we like to say. So thank you, June, for being on any last words. No, I'm not to talk to anybody. I appreciated the opportunity. It actually used my time well. It had me put all of my notes about this on paper. <laughs> so yeah. now I have um, the details I need. In fact, if you'd like, I'll just email you this, Jenny. That'd be great. And I can, I can put it up on the site for people for tips for um, the virtual process for doing I edit a little bit. I think I'll edit okay. a little bit. All right. Um, thank you. I'm going to close down my video. Okay. So thank you. And um, so now I'm sorry about the video. So I'll have to make sure to ask that question next time I come on live. Can you see me? It's the video setting. It was in the wrong HD or whatever. So, all right, um, Mary, I don't see you. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring Chris on because he's been patiently waiting. So Chris, good morning. Hey there, how are you? Can you hear me all right? I can hear you. Good. I can see you, I can hear you, You're, you look good. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me on. This is uh, yeah. really exciting, Jenny. It's very exciting. And so for people who don't know who you are, because I did a bit of an intro, let people go ahead and introduce yourself and share about your background. Sure. I've been a professional speaker and business consultant since 1988. Um, got started uh, in 1988, been speaking all over the world, uh, of course, all over the U.S. I think I've spoken in 46 of the of the 50 United States and then all over the world and, and uh, primarily around leadership, influence, impact, uh, how to make a difference in the lives of other people, primarily through leadership, but also uh, I, my book called The Art of Influence has taken me all over the world talking to leaders and sales teams. I do executive coaching with uh, entrepreneurs and and uh, executives. And, and so it's all really kind of in the professional development space. Uh, I've written two primary books on leadership. One is called The Leadership Rules, and then the other I mentioned earlier, The Art of Influence. So it's always fun to be able to be with people and talk about good things. You mentioned earlier, you know, uh, the news is just, oh boy. I mean, every I, I don't even watch it really that much anymore because it's all just one topic. Uh, right. And if there was other news, I'd probably turn it on, but that's about all they talk about. So what I try to do is is bring good stuff every day on Facebook and and uh, Instagram and all the different places, YouTube, where we can inspire people and challenge people and let them know that there's good stuff happening too. Right. I mean, I think for a lot of people, it's it's scary because they're, this is not, people go, this is the new normal. I mean, it's the new normal for this snapshot in time. And then the goal is to get back to what was normal, um, you know, back to our lives. And so this is a temporary situation. And I think the the hard part is the unknown factor, like how long is this going to last? I mean, Somebody who's on here, Charlie, I'm sorry that you're sick. Um, Charlie Smith says that, that um, they are positive for the virus. And so um, I hope that you recover fine and don't have any complications from it. And um, somebody had posted on Facebook, like, do you actually know anybody who has the virus? And at that time I said, no. Um, now I do have a you know family relative that has it, but I don't really know anyone else personally. So, and that's a good thing. Um, we don't want people to be sick, but it's it's a scary time. And there, there are two different, you know, temper, you take that personality temperaments. There's some people that are naturally going to be more um, upbeat and positive. And then there's the ones that like to, you know, look at kind of wallow and go to that place. You know, this they, is a, that's, a, that's a really good lesson, I think, for leaders. Um, I talk about the difference between optimism and pessimism. And then you always have some people who say, I am neither an optimist nor a pessimist. I am a realist. And, and, and so, but this is interesting. I've done a lot of thinking about this and I talk about it in a lot of my speeches. All of us are realists. 
we all know the, the realistic assessment of what is going on is that there's a virus, people are getting sick, we're in lockdown. That's reality. So we're all realists. I'm working from home. We're, you're, you know, you're working from home. A lot of us already work from home, but, but you know what I mean, right? So that's the realistic part. But then we are also either optimists or pessimists. So optimists and pessimists are also both realist. The, the optimism and the pessimism comes from our attitudes and how we are going to project the future. And so strong leaders can say, yeah, it's, it's bad, but you know what? We can make it better. I'll give you an example, like a foot, you two football coaches, they come in at halftime, right? And they're down 21 to zero. And they all say, both coaches say, this is, you know, we played horribly. We didn't make blocks. We didn't make tackles. We didn't run our routes. You know, that's a realistic assessment. Both coaches make that assessment. One coach, however, he says, you know what? You stunk it up so bad. I know we're going to lose in the second half. I don't even know why we're going to go play. You guys suck. That's a pessimist. <laughs> it's a realist because he, he understands the assessment, but then he's also projecting that's going to be bad. The optimistic coach says, you know what? We played horribly in that first half. We missed our tackles. We missed our blocks. We didn't catch our passes, but you're a better team. And we have 30 more minutes to go back out there. And I know that if we do this, this, and this, that we can go out and win this ball game. Now, both of them gave a realistic halftime assessment, but one chose to be the optimist, the other chose to be the pessimist. And I think that's the difference between people who are going to succeed and people who are going to fail uh, is, is whether or not you can see yourself and bring others along with you to get out of where we're at. Right. And I, I agree that hundred percent. That's a great analogy. Um, and you're going to be talking at our conference on the art of influence that the book, so it's, it, what number book is that? Number 20 or was it number? Boy, it's probably more like number 14, 15. I think I have like 14, I think I like 14 hardcover books. And then I have a few eBooks, you know, and some of those kinds of things. Total is 21. My 21st book is coming out in November uh, called Lasting Impact. But art of influence is the one that has taken me all over the world speaking. So as a leader, I mean, so does a leader have to have a big team or is it, can a leader be one person? What's your take on that? Yeah, a leader can be one person. In fact, I tell, I tell people that almost everybody in the world is a leader to somebody. Um, I, I think, you know, if you're a 25 year old single person and you drive straight to your office and you work by yourself and never talk to anybody, maybe you're cutting code software, and then you come home and you game all night, you may not lead somebody. But almost everybody else leads somebody, whether you're a parent, an older sibling, a little league coach, a home stager, a CEO. We all lead professor in college. We all lead somebody. And so it's important for all of us to understand uh, the scope of our leadership. And sure, you can lead one person. If you're a single mom and you have one child, you are a leader and you are a very important leader and you're going to make a difference in that child's life. Absolutely. And I, I feel like, especially um, in this, what we're going through right now, that people who are leaders in our industry, real estate, home staging, people are looking to the leaders to, you know, kind of for guidance, like, what should I do? And Because I think, again, a lot of people are nervous. I remember, so I've been at this since 2002. So I weathered um, as a stager, the last, you know, the economic demise of the whole mortgage fallout, that whole industry thing. King, you know, I remember my, um, speaking at a conference and it was how to thrive in a changing market was my topic. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't like the word um, survive because it's like, you're just getting by, but thrive right. means you're actually growing and changing. And my theme song was I'm still standing by John, by Elton John. Yeah. So again, my theme song, cause there's so many people went out of business because they didn't have a, um, they didn't have a long-term plan or a vision. And so kind of talk about that with people. Cause there's a lot of newer people that enter the industry and this actually will attract people coming in too, because they'll, they'll look at, I got laid off from my job or I lost my job. And now what am I going to do? And I don't ever want to be at the mercy of some other company anymore. I'm going to start my own business. What am I going to do? Oh, I like to decorate. I'll be a home stager. And they find their way into the industry. Yeah. So it, this will actually will help grow it. But for people who are newer, um, you know, how do you have that long-term plan and vision? What, what do they need to be doing? Yeah, you know, you brought up the difference, uh, the difference between surviving and thriving, and it made me immediately think about the difference between accepting change and embracing change. You know, a lot of people say, well, I just want to survive this thing. Well, no, you can thrive if you want to. In every downturn, there are people who thrive. You know, I, I used to have a TV show with Zig Ziglar, and Zig used to talk about coming out of the, uh, the depression and seeing that even in the depression, there were people that thrived. There are industries right now that are thriving. 
um, because of the, the negative things that are taking place. So there's always opportunity. You just have to be able to see it. And it's sort of like the difference between accepting change and embracing change. People are like, well, you know, we got to accept it. It's an, it's the new reality. And then you have people like, I loved your first guest. She's like, that's embracing change. What she was talking about was embracing change, not just accepting, oh, here we go. She's like, no, this is a new way to do our business. And you embrace it. That's all about attitude. And so what I would suggest for people who are new into the industry, you're actually kind of lucky. I think you're lucky that this is happening at the beginning, right? Because now for, for the rest of your life as a home stager, everything else can be a walk in the park. It's like a buddy of mine early on in our 20s, he became a, a stockbroker and like right out of the shoot, six months in, crater, it was like Black Monday or something like that. And he says, you know what? I'm glad it didn't happen 20 years into my or 10 years into my career. I'm glad it happened right out of the shoot because now he's been doing it for 20 something years and nothing surprises him anymore. You know, it's that panic of new things uh, when something happens. But then the older you get and the wiser you get, the more you realize, you know what, there's ups and downs, there's ebbs and flows. Um, but strong leaders, people who are persistent, uh, who have a long range vision of their business, they're the ones who make it. It's the people who are, are you know, grabbed back and forth, left and right by every change of the circumstances, those are the folks that eventually wash out because they're they're dependent upon their circumstances rather than their values and their vision and, and those kinds of things that are going to move them forward. And, and two words that keep coming to mind, the shift, which Gary Keller wrote a book, Shift, the lot when the market, is that, um, Eisen would know this, I don't know if that was from the last... 2009 it came out okay so he's downstairs he just said that 2009 so that that would address the the shift in the real estate market and then the word pivot so uh, i know robbie has um that's what minutes, robbie pivot. about pivoting yeah. yeah and that's such a great word so we do have to kind of adjust and, and even before this happened the industry is is shifting and pivoting you know with the i buyers and the i sellers and there's a lot there's a lot going on with the investors coming in and um so the the industry itself is changing we'll see how we come out of this together um, but you do have to adapt. You know, what I did 18 years ago when I got started, I don't do that anymore for staging. My my business has shifted, changed along with what we provide to the clients. Um, I had remember last time when the market collapsed, I did have a stager in Dallas. He reached out to me and he's like, Oh my gosh, you know, 80% of my clients have just they were all older realtors and they just decided to hang up their hats. And so he was like, My business has completely dropped. What do I do? And I said, Cast your net wider. I said, You got to get back out there and market. And so um, as a business owner, we can never stop marketing our message and so forth to capture business and to, and, but what is our messaging going to say right now? So it should be, you know, to me, it's like, how can I, how can I help my clients? Um, you know, they still have to buy and sell houses. What can I do to, uh, to shift and adapt so that I can still serve them? So think about, you know, I mean, what is that? What do you, what do you think about that type of messaging? Yeah, I think that we need to be leaders. We need to be visionary um, because here's what happens. When things like this happen, people become myopic and everything goes like this and all they can see is their problem just like this. You know, they get like tunnel vision. Leaders have to have a broader vision of what's happening. And, um, you know, I think it was Napoleon that said that leaders are lenders of hope. Right. And we're supposed to be people who lend hope to other people because people lose hope pretty quickly. Leaders are people who have reservoirs of hope and then they lead with hope. Uh, again, being realistic, but I think it's important for us to be the ones who brighten the room when we walk in. You know, Zig used to talk about uh, people who could brighten a room when you walk in. Or he said, there's people that brighten a room when you walk out. And you don't want to be the person who brightens the room when you walk out. Like, oh gosh, I'm so glad. Like, and I was like, I was thinking, I was thinking about like, you know, Winnie the Pooh, the characters. You think about personality temperaments. I always think about Eeyore. I always loved Eeyore, but I always felt sorry for him. But ooh, like Eeyore, but you want to be like a Tigger. Or, or who's of, the guy with the with the rain always on him? You know. Oh, that was um, Linus like or Pig Pen. Pig Pen. Pig Pen right? It's like there's a lot of people just walking around dirty, dusty, with rain on their head all the time. Yeah, that's and, true. And, but here's the reality. That's a choice. It's yeah. really a choice. Like, you want to be like Snoopy. Not, not that we want to be like manic. You know, I was thinking about Tigger and Snoopy. They're happy. They're upbeat. They need a little bit of a focus. Um, but, you know, you do want to keep your attitude up. And so I remember hearing this years and years ago um, that you're, you know, five years from now, you'll be impacted by the people you hang around with, the books that you read and the people that you listen to. And so what are you reading? 
right now. Um, you know, I mean, I used to, when I would travel, I would get People Magazine, just have it on the airplane. But I sort of just was like, why am I wasting my money on this crap? So I, it's been years since I've read anything like that because it doesn't do anything except help me if I was ever on Jeopardy and they had some question about a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you quoted, yeah. uh, you quoted Charlie Tremendous Jones. Uh, Charlie Jones is the guy that used to say that in five years will be the product of the books you read and the people you spend the most time with. And, and it's really true. You know, what are you putting into your, into your brain? You got a lot of downtime right now. You know, we got, we got forced to stay in our homes and things like that. Pick up a book and read it. I've been reading some great books and, and uh, a lot of fun, good stuff. I just, I was challenged to read a 650 page book. And uh, so I challenged uh, seven other guys to read it with me. Um, and it was great. We, it was sort of you know, something we never would have done, but we did. And we learn and we grow and we challenge ourselves. And and so taking a look at the people around you is imperative. Uh, Jim Rohn is a guy that I spent the last seven years of his life. Some of you will know the name Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N. Jim uh, was a legend in our industry. He gave Tony Robbins his first job, by the way, actually. Tony was 17. He went to work selling Jim Rohn seminars. And Tony and I both spoke at Jim's memorial service in uh, in Anaheim. Um, but, uh, you know, Jim always used to talk about, uh, in, in, we wrote a book together called the 12 pillars about, um, your associations. And in the book, 12 pillars, we talk about three different kinds of associations. And I categorize, I categorize everybody into one of these three associations. One is expanded associations. These are people you want to do more business with. You want to spend more time with. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. Um, it's win-win. Then you have limited associations and limited associations are people who um, you have to do business with or maybe they're in the cubicle next to you or maybe it's your crazy uncle who you have to spend three holidays a year with, but they're not really a win-win relationship. It's not really mutual beneficial. So you limit that relationship. And then we have disassociation. And frankly, there's some people that we should just disassociate with. And I don't mean in an, an angry, mad way, like you're a horrible person. I don't want to associate with you anymore, but just letting it go. I think a lot of us have friends of convenience People that, you know, why are they your friend? Well, he's been my friend since high school. That's not a good reason, you know. Um, and there, we need to take a look at the people we surround ourselves with because they're going to make us better or worse. We're going to start talking like them, acting like them, going where they go, doing what they do. And the question that Jim Rohn always used to ask after all those questions was, is that okay? Where do they have me going? What do they have me saying? What do they have me thinking? And is that okay? And for some of us, when we analyze the people we're spending our time with, we may say, I don't want to be like that person. Well, I remember um, years ago, we were network marketing and they used to say like, you'd have to go prospect for business, you had to go meet people. And so, um, and, you know, start strike up a conversation and so forth. So I remember they would say like, if, if it was really easy for you to do that, then this person's below your, um, I forget whether it was level. It wasn't like aspirational level. So if somebody was scared at you, like you're like, I don't really want to talk to that person. That's probably the person you need to go talk to because they're somebody that, um, you know, and I, I can't think of the right terminology, but they were above my my regular right. level. So to want to stretch ourselves to be with people who are uh, where we want to be or or we admire and aspire to be like. So um, we, you know, you know, you want to have a balance because you said we do lead other people. So how are, how are we influencing them? But then also think about people that you want to be around. And if they scare you to go talk to them, it's probably a, a, a good thing. And, and we should pursue those people. And we have time to do that, you yeah. know, to just reach out to them. I found LinkedIn to be a, a, just a really great place to meet people. I've developed some really good relationships, a widespread uh, group of relationships. For example, here in Scottsdale, I live in Scottsdale. I have reached out to tons of people when I moved down here just to make connections and develop some friendships. Everybody from a guy who owns three of our highest end hotels to the fastest growing Orthodox rabbi in Scottsdale. I mean, they started a, a synagogue, I think, six years ago, and now there's 700 families. And everybody in between, from hotel owners to restaurant owners to rabbis to, you know, and everybody in between. And I do that because I want to surround myself with really great people. And uh, and I found that people, particularly in LinkedIn, are very open to that kind of thing. So reach out in your industry. Find find people that you want to network with, that you that you want to learn from, you know, do some small masterminds together. I mean, there's lots of great ways to connect uh, for, for us to do that. <laughs> Linda, Lancey is saying um, the quote, leaders are lenders of hope. 
reservoirs of hope. What was the other phrase? And so do you remember what you were saying? And if not, we, this is recorded. So Linda, we can always, you can always watch it. <laughs> I don't write I didn't take notes down. So um, do you remember what you were saying? Reservoirs of hope and lenders we're, of hope. We're, yeah, we're lenders of hope. And, but in order to be a lender of hope, we have to have a reservoir of hope in our own life, right? We, in yeah. order to give to somebody else, we have to have a stash to give from. And so, uh, so yeah, we need to be hopeful people. Leaders are hopeful people. I, and I agree with connecting. So, I mean, um, and it, depending on like age group and so forth, like where are people going? I mean, um, you know, Facebook, obviously the Gen Xers are a lot on Facebook. LinkedIn, I, I I'm definitely have a profile and on there. I'm not as active in there as I probably should be. So that's a great tip to don't forget to go in there because from a business standpoint, um, it's a great resource. I'm trying to reach out to 17 hats people to have them come to our conference. I can't find one person who'll, you know, get back to me. So I'm hunting them down on LinkedIn and kind of stalking them there. Yeah. <laughs> see if I can't get some connection, but it's, a, that's a great group. Um, and the younger kids, you know, uh, we found out about the car accident because our son posted on Snapchat him, himself in a CT CAT scan machine. Mm. And we hadn't even know he was in a car accident. Oh, so no. anyway, I wasn't even on Snapchat. My niece was, I'm like, she goes, is Logan in the hospital? I'm like, what the heck? So that's where that generation is. They're on the Snapchat um, yeah. app. And so, you know, but but connect and meaningful connections. And I, I feel like um, there's some really great things coming out of this where people are doing the virtual congregating and um, messages of hope, whether it's regional or just, you know, through an industry. I think that's really beneficial. And so I'm kind of excited to see what, what comes out of all of this, that I hope we don't just yeah. go back to, okay, we're done with that. No more, you know. Yeah. And be thinking about other groups that you could serve, you know, home stagers, obviously you want to have relationships with real estate agents, right? What about putting on a zoom, uh, seven tips, every, uh, real estate agent needs to know about home staging or something like that. And just a free zoom and reach out to all the real estate agents in your city and tell them, look, this Wednesday night, I'm doing this thing. It's going to, it'll be 30 minutes. I'm going to give you seven great tips. And you just invite people to, it's all free. There's not going to be an upsell just, and just value, right? Just creating value for people. Uh, you know, if you get four or five people, even let alone, if you could get 40 or 50 people, that'd be fantastic. But even if you got four or five people to say, you know what, that's new connections, new relationship. You're creating that mutually beneficial uh, relationship, that win-win where you're both giving to each other. And even helping the agents, like if they're trying to get houses ready and they don't, they haven't thought about the virtual consultation or, um, you know, the service, even a virtual preview of a vacant, you know, as long as I have pictures, somebody sends those to me, I can, I can put pricing together. Um, and so I feel like making sure that your clients know what you can offer. And then as you're saying, helpful tips value. I think that's a really key word because um, people tune into things and they want to watch because they get, they're going to be like, what's in it for me? And that's a natural human, you know, question. Like why, exactly. why would I want to take half an hour, 15 minutes or an hour to watch something? What value am I going to get out of it? So mm -hmm. It could just be like your attitude is uplifted. It could actually be like there's one one nugget that you take away. Like I'm going to implement that in my business right now. What a great idea! So, yeah, um, which kind of brings us to the conference. And um, so I'm excited to have you come into Denver and uh, you know have you be sharing as our business keynote and also the advanced stage or training. And the, the book <clears throat> you will be speaking from is the Art of Influence. And we did that on purpose because it is you have to cultivate leaders, right? Yeah. And you have to cultivate it in your own self. And the funny thing is, you know, most people in life, we say, I want to have this. Tell me what I need to do. And that's a great question. Tell me what I need to do. But the art of influence is not so much about telling us what we need to do, but it's about who we are. It's be. It's who do we need to be. And this was something that I learned from Zig when he mentored me was, was his uh, equation. He, he always used to say, it's not do have, it's be, do, have. And so it's really leadership and influence is really a personal development. Um, uh, it's really about personal development. In fact, the subtitle of the art of, of influence is persuading others begins with you. And so it's not just what we do, but it's also about who we are. It's about our values, our ethics, our morals. Uh, it's, it's who we tell the world we are by the way we live our life and how that cultivates uh, respect and loyalty and admiration and trust and all those kinds of things that we want from our clients. I can't wait. It's going to be so great. And um, 
you're just, you know, your background, and he, he gave a little snapshot of it, but, you know, very super impressive as far as who you are in the speaking world. He's ranked, I think you're in the top, was it the top 20 in the world? Top 50. I was number 48. I was one spot ahead of, um, uh, oh, who's the female uh, financial? Susie Orman. I beat Susie oh, Orman great. by one spot, so I'm <laughs> I'm happy about that. Well, it's very impressive. So he's the top 50 motivational professional speakers in the world. And uh, we get to have you come to Denver. So he'll be on later on this summer. Um, obviously, the advanced age training. Um, super excited that you have agreed to be part of that. And so yeah. those of you that are watching, you know, um, I know maybe not like this second, but you do want to get your, your registration for the conference if you haven't. We are all plans are to move forward and we'll assess that in about a month or so. We'll kind of take a look at what everything's going on in my my hope and prayer is that we're back on track with everything because we need the conference. We want to see everybody. We need the education. We need the motivation and we need speakers like you who can help us inspire us in our business success. So, well, yeah, and I was at that. I was at the Gaylord last year for a conference in July. It's a spectacular hotel. It's beautiful. The conference facilities are amazing. It's, it's just world-class. The Gaylord does an amazing job in all their hotels, uh, but it's just world-class. I was there last July. Uh, Denise and I were both there and it's fantastic. We are really looking forward. You guys are a great organization. We love your attitude and your spirit and, and Jenny, you're a great leader and we're just super excited to be able to be there. I am too. And so I thank you for joining me today. I know we'll have you on uh, later this summer. Yeah, and for, for those sure. of you, um, how do people find out more about you? So your website, I'm going to type it in here. So Chris, is it yeah, chriswidener.com? C-H-R-I-S-W-I-D-E-N-E-R.com. They can also uh, find me on Facebook, Chris Widener Speaker. Um, I have a coaching site at widenercoaching.com, but they can Google my name and find lots of places. It's exciting. And um, and he has, again, all these the 14 books. Uh, there's also, you said some of the, um, there's, there's workbooks too, because I was looking at all of them. And he'll have, I mean, you'll bring, I don't know if you take pre-orders at our conference for your book that's being released in November, but I'm excited about that as well. So, you know, yeah. pick up, pick up the 12 pillars is a great book. Um, Art of Influence will be speaking from that at conference. And so, you know, do yourselves a favor and, and get that ahead of time. So you, you know, know his lingo and understand that the content of the um, topic. So yeah, and if they yeah. bring a book to the conference, I'd be happy to sign it. Uh, that would be fantastic. That'd be great. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chris. Appreciate Thanks you for having here. me. I appreciate it. Okay. Take care. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to please share this segment out to everybody that you, um, if you just hit the share button, because it is a the home staging talk show page um, is public. So you can share this to your page and then that may allow us to reach as many people as possible. Of course, these are all recorded and they are on the homestagingtalk.com website. They're also on our YouTube channel, the IHOS YouTube channel. And so you can always go back and watch previous segments and rehear. Um, today's session was really great. Mary, I'm sorry we didn't get you on. So we'll we'll figure out the tech for next time um, and get you on. So remember, in about 22 minutes, we're going to start the business um, insurance topic. And we'll talk about you know what you need to be doing for your business to protect it. Um, and, and or what what are some benefits for you possibly as a business owner that you can take it you know take advantage of to remain viable and just help yourself through this time. All right, so thanks everybody. We will see you next week. We'll have another great session for you. And until then, um, stay safe, keep your loved ones close to you, and um, keep a positive attitude. Find some some way to impact your business in a positive way this week, so you are planning for the future. Thanks so much, everyone. See you next week.